Okay, so let's take a look at the cut command. So cut allows you to remove sections of text from a line. So let's start off with a line. So let's just echo I like lamp and pipe that into cut. And the first flag we're gonna use is the byte flag. So dash B and let's cut the first byte. So you can see we get the I character from the beginning of that line. With cut, we can also select sequences and ranges of bytes, characters, or fields. So let's just do a sequence here. So the same thing, and let's get the sixth byte as well. And we get an I and an E. So when cutting text, it's better to use the character flag instead of the byte flag, as this flag uses the locale information to determine how many bytes represent a character. So as my locale is English UK, if I try and cut some text that's in a different language with the character flag, I'll get some strange output. But if my locale language was set to the language that I was cutting, the character flag would work as expected. So I've got a file here, which is Greek, and let's just cut that. So you can see it's the Greek alphabet in upper and lower case. So let's try and cut the first character from this file. So cut dash C and we want the first character and we just need to provide the file name now. So Greek and hit enter and we get this weird, strange question mark. So let's try and do the first and the second character. And as you can see, we actually get the first character and that is because that first character is actually two bytes long. So let's use the B flag. It's two bytes long. So let's check out the fields flag now. So let's just make a file that contains some numbers. So for I in sequence, let's just do, I don't know, 10, 10 lines, sequence 10. Let's do echo and let's do sequence, separate it by spaces. And let's go for one to nine. And then let's just redirect that into our file called numbers.txt, done. So if we just cat that out, so cat numbers.txt, there's our file filled with numbers. So in order to use the fields flag, we first need to provide a delimiter. So as our numbers are separated by spaces, that's what we're gonna use, but a delimiter can be any single character. It all depends on what single character is separating your fields. So let's cut the second field in our numbers file. So cut dash D and our delimiter is going to be a space and we want field two and we just need to provide our file, which is numbers dot text and hit enter and we get field two. We can also use sequences and ranges with fields. So let's just cut the second and the eighth field. So two and eight, two comma eight and we get the second and the eighth field. We could also have put eight comma two, and this won't actually have any effect on our output. So as you can see, it still goes for the first column first. So now let's just do a range. So let's just modify this, and let's just say we want um, two to eight. Actually, no, let's just do two to five, and then comma, let's do six to eight. So you can do sequences, ranges, and sequences of ranges. Let's say we wanted everything apart from the third field. So we could do that by cutting the first field and the second field, and then cut the fourth field all the way to the end. So let's do it that way first. So cut, and then our delimiter, which is a space. And we want fields, everything up to field two. Notice that you don't actually have to put one up to two. You can just do this shorthand, which is everything up to two. And we want field four to the end. And then just provide our file. So you can see that we have everything apart from the third field. Now there is another way that we can do this. So let's just modify this. And let's get rid of these. And let's select the third field. And then we can use another option, which is called complement. So double dash complement. And if we hit enter now, you can see that we have the same result. So that's everything apart from the third field. You can also use the complement option with the byte flag and the character flag as well. So for the next flag, let's append a line to our numbers.txt file. So let's just echo one to nine and append that to numbers. So you can see our last line is not separated by spaces. 
So now let's try and cut the third field in this line. So cut our delimiter again. And we want field three. And let's just put in our numbers file. So there we go. So you can see that this output is probably not what we wanted. So what happened was cut reached the end of the line without encountering any delimiter and then just printed the line. So there is a flag to sort this out and that is the S flag. And let's just put it in right at the beginning. So dash S. And what this does is it tells cut to ignore any lines that do not contain our delimiter, which is a space. So if we hit enter now, we get the third field and we don't get that line without delimiters in it. So let's just cut out this numbers file again. So we've got it on screen and let's just get rid of that last line. So let's use one more option on this numbers file. So cut dash D and we want, let's just say we want fields two, four, six, and eight. And we want to change the output delimiter. So let's just run this first. So you can see that our columns are separated by spaces. Now let's say that we wanted to separate that with something else. The option for that is, let's just put it in here actually, double dash output dash delimiter. So this delimiter is not limited to being one character and can be whatever you want. And it also helps if you spell it correctly. So the final flag that we're going to look at is the zero terminator flag. So let's just clear the screen. So this tells cut that our lines are terminated with null bytes instead of new line characters. So I actually have a file that I've put some null characters in. So let's just cut it out. So there are null characters in this file. So first let's try and cut the third and fifth field. So cut, actually, let me just remove the numbers file first so that I can use tab auto completion. So let's just look at this file. So cat null text and the output that we get looks like a normal line of text. So let's just cut that. Let's use space as the delimiter. So dash D and we want spaces and let's cut field three and five and we get line this. So let's use the Z flag to tell cut that this file is separated by null bytes. And let's just go for the third field of each of these lines. And there's our output. So I'm just gonna open this file with Vim so you can see where the null bytes are. So everywhere where you see a caret and an at symbol is actually a null byte. So there are three null bytes in this file. Before we move on to CSV files, let's just take a quick look at fixed width text files. So if I just cut out this file I have, which is fixed width, you can see that it's just a bunch of names, numbers, and cities. So let's say that you wanted to cut the first and last column from this file. You might be tempted to try and use the field flag with a space for a delimiter, but that won't really be such a good idea as the number of spaces in between these columns is variable. So in this case, your only real option is to count the number of characters on a line and see where each one of these columns start. So let's just use head just to get the first line. So we want the first line of this file, which is called fixed. There we go. Actually, let's just do the first two lines. Might be easier to count. So what you would have to do is you would have to count all of the characters in this line, including these spaces, and then find out which number this is, and then keep going and count this one. Now I'm just gonna pipe this into WC just to get the character count. Actually, I just want the first line for that, sorry, not two. There we go. So this is the number of characters in this line here. So if we just minus four from 36, we get 32. So that should take us to about here. So this column starts at about 32 characters from the far left. And this one I've pre-counted is actually 10 characters from the left. So let's just cut out the first and the last column. So cut dash C, and we want everything up to the 10th character. And we want everything from the 32nd character to the end and the name of our file. And there you go. So there's the first and the last column. So that's how to deal with fixed width 
files or fixed width data. So the last thing that we're going to cover now is CSV files. So values in a CSV file are separated by commas. So if we look at this example, so let's have a look at this. So cat users, you can see that the line length is variable and each one of our values is separated by commas. So we've got names, numbers and cities. So let's say we wanted to cut out the names and the numbers. So let's use cut and put in a delimiter, which is going to be a comma. And we want fields one and two, and then just put our file in. And there we go. We've got the names column and the numbers column, but we also have the header from this CSV file, which we could remove by piping this output into tail with the N flag and plus two. And that will give us everything apart from the first line which was the header line. But there is one thing that we need to watch out for when using cut with CSV files, and that is quoted text that might contain commas within their values. So if we look at the last column, and we just scroll this up a little bit, you can see that Los Angeles contains a comma. So cut would see this line as having four fields instead of three fields like the rest of our lines. So if we wanted the third column, we would get only part of that value. So let's just do that quickly. And let's just edit one of the previous commands that we used. So let's just say one and three, and let's just scroll up. So we don't actually have the full value. So let's say we wanted the names in the cities. We could actually get around that in this particular situation as our column containing that extra comma is actually the last one. So what we could do is we could use cut and then our comma delimiter and let's just say field two and we can use the complement option and you can see that we get the full last value so if the cities column was column one or two this would actually give us an incorrect result as it would introduce an extra field to this row so every subsequent column would be shifted to the right by one or however many extra commas you have so that is just something to keep in mind if you come across the occasion when you want to quickly cut a csv file you might be better off using another tool like the python csv module or any number of available tools that are built specifically to deal with CSV files. But for the quick and dirty, cut is actually pretty good in most situations. Okay, so that's how to use cut, and that's brought us to the end of this video. So I hope you found it useful, and thanks for watching. Subscribe.